Praise the Lord, everybody. Praise the Lord, everybody. Amen, amen. It's a pleasure and a blessing to be back into the house of the Lord. First Sunday in the month of May. Look what God has brought us from. And we praise God, amen, for all things today, man. We're going to get ready to enter into our praise and our worship. And we're going to uh, get ready to go into prayer. We're going to ask that you stand, amen. Open up your hearts and your minds. Amen. When you see what it is that the Lord has for you. How many of you want a blessing from the Lord today? I want more and more of Jesus. Y'all remember that someone that said more and more? Yeah, that's what I want. More and more. Let us go to the Father God, in the name of Jesus. Once and son again, we come before your presence. Lord, we come for no other reason today than to say thank you. Thank you, God, for our life, our health, and our strength. Thank you, O oh God, for being such a good and mighty God. Thank you, Lord, for your grace and your mercy. Oh, God, we just praise you, O oh God, because you've been good to us. Father God, you've been better to us than we've been to ourselves. Lord, we know today could have been another way, could have been another day. Lord, we could have been six feet under, but we thank you, O oh God, for being above ground today. Father, as we enter into this service today, we invite you to come in today, O oh God, to have your way, O oh God. Have your way, O oh God, in this service, O oh God. Send forth your anointing, O oh God. Let your spirit flow as never before. In the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, Lord, we need you right now. We need a touch from you, O oh God. We need a touch from you, O oh God. Have your way in our life, oh God. Have your way in our life, oh God. In the name of Jesus, we bless you, oh Lord. We honor you, Lord. We glorify your name. We give you the praise. We give you the worship. In Jesus' name. Come on. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Touch right now, Lord. Touch right now, Lord. Hallelujah. Have your way, oh God. Have your way, Lord. We need a touch today. We need to be with that. In the name of Jesus. Bless your service. We give you the glory. And we give you the honor. In Jesus' name we pray. Hallelujah. Hallelujah.
know what you're waiting on to give God praise. I don't know what you're waiting on. But everything in this house should be given God praise. Can we clap our hands together like this is a sanctified church on today? You said, Pastor, I might not can dance like everybody else, but we can clap our hands. Look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, would you help me? Give God praise today. Say, all you got to do is clap your hands. Can we clap our hands? Oh, no, we're not waiting on the music, but can you clap your hands? The Bible says, Clap your hands, all ye people. Can we clap? Can we clap? Oh, you got about 30 more seconds and we gotta move. Come on, come on. Give God the best praise that you have in this place. Come on, give him the best praise that you have. Come on, lift up your voice, lift up your hands, and begin to magnify the name of the Lord. Begin to say good things to Jesus on today because he's been a friend. He's been a father. He's been a way maker. He's been a keeper. He's been a provider. And Lord, we just want to say thank you. Lord, we just want to say thank you. Thank you for being so good to me. Thank you right now for bringing me out. God, I want to say thank you. I want to say thank you. Hallelujah. Come on, clap your hands all over this sanctuary. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Take your seat. Take your seat. Hallelujah. Look at your neighbor. Say, I can feel the presence of the Lord. Come on, tell your neighbor. Say, I can feel the presence of the Lord in this place. Amen. Amen. We just want to welcome you to One Step of Faith Outreach Ministries, a dynamic church that's teaching and training God's people to make a difference in a difficult world. We hope that today's experience will be a life-changing experience just for you. If you are new to the area, do not have a church home, we welcome you to join us every Sunday morning for our Sunday morning live. Amen. Every Sunday at 10.30 a.m. We're here every Sunday, 10.30 a.m. for Sunday morning live. We have children ministry uh, first, second, and third Sunday every Sunday from the ages 2 to 12. So if you have your child there in the ages of 2 to 12, if you would like for your child to go, please see the usher. Amen. Your child can go to children ministry. Also, we welcome you to join us on Wednesday night for Wild Wednesday. Everybody say Wild Wednesday. Wild Wednesdays is Wednesday Words of Wisdom. We're here every Wednesday from 7 to 8 o'clock. We have classes for the children, classes for the adults, and also classes for the teenagers. Amen? Amen. And so we challenge you to meet us here on Sundays and on Wednesday night. We believe God is doing something here at One Step of Faith. Amen? How many of y'all can sense the presence of the Lord on today? Oh, this side of the church. I said, how many of y'all can sense the presence of the Lord? Just a challenge to you today. Will you look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, whatever you need from the Lord, God is here to meet your need. 
I got two people excited over here. Look behind you somewhere else and look at the neighbor and say, neighbor, whatever you need from the Lord, God is here. God is here. If you're not too mean, tell your neighbor, say, it's not by coincidence that you showed up today. But this day was already written in heaven. And everything you've been worrying about, everything you've been crying over, everything you've been wondering that's going to happen, today is your day. Point at somebody across the room and say, today is, it is your day. It is, it is your day. And before we move on, can you make that thing personal? Can you say, today is my day, today is my day can you act like if it was your birthday you know how it is you say today is my birthday yeah it's my birthday month can you say that today and insert your name in there and say today is insert your name day come on come on today is passenger mail's day oh yeah can't nobody encourage you like you can encourage yourself say today is my day my day my day i i won't wait till the battle is over but i'll shout right now I won't wait till I get home, but I'll dance right now. I won't wait until the money show up, but I'll praise God now because today it is, it is my day. Hallelujah. I don't know about you, but I'm excited to be in the house of the Lord today. The Bible says where the spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. The Bible says, listen, I was glad when they said unto me, let us go into the house of the Lord. And I came to let you know that you made it into the house of the Lord. Amen. Healing is here. Deliverance is here. Freedom is here. Oh, I'm talking about everything you need is here today. It's here today. And we thank God for all of our online guests that are here with us today. Let's thank God for our YouTube and Facebook. That's our virtual church. Amen. We have so many members uh, that's watching live. Some of you we've never even met, but we thank God for you joining us online on today. We thank God for people that's in different states. Can we thank God for our online? Oh, okay, come on, come on. We got people in different states that are watching different countries. I have friends that's over in Japan that's watching us. So I'm telling you, God is doing a work right here at one step of faith. Do something real quick and we're gonna continue with our announcement. Grab your phone real quick. Go ahead and share this live. Go to the One Step of Faith Church page on Facebook or YouTube, whatever the case may be. Go ahead and share, like, comment, tag somebody. Say, listen, you need this word on today. You need this word on today. Hallelujah. Just so glad to see all of these smiling faces. Amen. Y'all look real good today. Tell your neighbor, say, you look real good. Look real good. Look real good. You put on your Sunday's best this morning and you comb your hair, brush your hair. You look real good, real good. Some of y'all trying to check your hair. Y'all, no, y'all look real good. Y'all look real good. My online guests, y'all look good too in your bonnets and your pajamas. Y'all look good too. Thank you for being in the house of the Lord. Go ahead and share like. I'm just giving y'all some time. Go ahead. Listen, when we share, when we like, Listen, what we're doing, we're getting the news out. We're spreading the news. People that, that, that normally won't come to church, they'll go on your timeline. And we pray that as they cross your timeline, that they will be unable to move, uh, move away from this service today because of the power and because of the anointing of God. So we challenge you to share, like, comment, tag somebody, say, listen, get to church. Get to our online service. Amen? Amen. Amen. I see y'all sharing. I see y'all liking. Glory to God. Just a couple of announcements. Yesterday we was able, on yesterday we did our community outreach on yesterday. And we just had a blast right here. Amen. Being able to uh, just uh, be a help or be a blessing in our community. What blessed me so much, we was able to give out over 200 boxes of groceries on yesterday. Can we give God praise for that? Over 200 boxes Amen. I don't know how many people, uh, Miss Vera, she'll, she'll get with me. I'll tell y'all about next week. But I don't know how many people we were able to serve, how many people we were able to connect with. We prayed for over, I think it was like 30-something people, 39 people, I think it was. Uh, about somewhere around in there. They'll, 
32. 32, she, uh, Lady Brittany said about 32 people we were able to pray. We prayed for people that was dealing with uh, sickness in their body. We prayed for people that just had strokes. We prayed for people uh, that they came and they were standing in the gap for people that was paralyzed. And they said, Pastor, I want you to pray that my daughter will, uh, my granddaughter will walk again. Say she was paralyzed from the waist down, but she was believing. And we was able to touch and agree with those people. We were able to pray. Uh, what I thought was amazing, some people came in and say, pray for my dog. And we prayed for the dog, too. Some of the teenagers, they told me, they said, Pastor, one, one lady said, can you pray for my dog? And we prayed for the dog. Hey, Amen. we didn't want, you know, that was a concern of the lady. Amen. So we prayed for the dog, too. We didn't lay hand on the dog, but we just said a prayer for the dog as well. Amen. And listen, we're being a blessing to our community. So many people, uh, the people that came, they was even saying thank you for just what you're doing in our community. I had so many people that was talking to me. I mean, all different races. Uh, all, I mean, just every all kind of people was coming saying, Pastor, thank you for what you're doing in our community. A community. And I want to thank God for all of our volunteers. We had about 25 volunteers. Can we thank God for our volunteers? Amen. We, I just want to say we worked our children so hard yesterday. We worked our children so hard. Our teenagers, we had them out at the streets with the signs. We had the, uh, the ones that were not even teenagers, they was filling the car. The children in children church, our boys is 10 and 11 years old. They was the one filling the cars up. Can we thank God for our children? Amen. And so we was able to be a blessing uh, to so many people, so many people. And we challenge you to uh, continue to partner with us with the Beyond the Four Walls uh, community outreach. We had on our t-shirts on yesterday. We was looking uniform. Uh, and then also, uh, we want to let you know that we have a couple of more months that we're doing. Uh, as of today, I do not have the date for May. I do not have the date. Okay, you got the picture. Go ahead and go ahead. I'm going to keep on talking. She'll play the pictures for you. But I do not have the date for May, but I will let you know as soon as possible. We are going to do May. We're also going to do June as well. And so we ask you to help us. Uh, I mean, whatever you can do. If you can only come on the pickup day. If you can only come and help prepare the food. If whatever you can do. We need your help. Amen? Amen. We need your help. Listen, God has not commanded us just to reach the people inside the four walls, but He, the Bible says go into the highways, into the hedges, and compel the people. Amen. And so when we're giving away food, we're giving away groceries, listen, we're being a blessing to them, but then we're also bringing an, an awareness to the people of God about Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Listen, even Jesus himself, the Bible talks about that he fed the 12. He fed, he fed the 5,000. He fed uh, 7,000. That wasn't even including the men and the children. I mean, the women and the children. And so listen, if Jesus did it, guess what? We can do it too. Oh, I, I, I y'all ain't excited about that. And listen, I'm telling you, whatever you do for another, the Lord will make do for you as well. You said, Pastor, it was just some fruits and vegetables, but that's all right. I sowed a seed, and I'm believing God for the seed that I sowed that is coming back to me a hundredfold. Amen? So, listen, we challenge you to partner with us. We'll get you those dates for uh, uh, May and June, and then we're going to start a food pantry, and we'll get all that information to you. But I'm just excited about what God is doing at One Step of Faith. If you guys are look around, God is filling up this house. If y'all just look around. Y'all look around. I, I know y'all see maybe some empty chairs, but we got children in a whole nother building. God is filling this house. Oh, y'all ain't excited. I remember the days when I could come and stand before you and I can point to every seat and tell you who was in that seat because there was only about 30 of us. I, I mean, everybody, Sister D sat right there and now she she keep getting booted back further and further. Sister D, you be careful. You'll be sitting in the back of the church. But I remember the days. I remember the days. Anybody know what I'm talking about? Anybody remember? Amen. And I'm telling you, but God is filling this house. And I want to thank you for what you are doing, inviting your family, inviting your friends. And I'm asking you and I'm challenging you, don't stop there because you are the very one that's going to cause your family and your friends to know Jesus. 
I said, you are the very one that's going to cause your family and your friends to what? Know Jesus. To know Jesus. And so don't stop. I challenge you to be an example to your family. Don't tell them. Don't, don't point them in their face. Put your finger in their face and at their nose and say, you're going to die and go to hell. I mean, that could be the truth. But listen, people want to know that you love them. So can you be an example and say, listen, I am an example of Jesus Christ, and I believe because of my life, listen, I believe that my family, my friends, and my loved ones will follow after Jesus because of the example that I set. Can we do that on today? Hallelujah. So I challenge you, let's be that example. Uh, next week, everybody say next week. Next week is what? Mother's Day. Everybody say Mother's Day. Mother's Day, it, I mean, it, it, it came up on us real fast, didn't it? Mother's Day, yo, we've been doing so much here at One Step of Faith, but when God has called you to so much, I'm telling you, the year just begin to go by, but next week is Mother's Day, and what we're going to do here at One Step of Faith, we did it maybe four or five years ago, I can't remember the exact year, but we're going to take Mother Day portrait. I want you to get your mother, I want you to get your children, uh, if you a mother, get all your children, say, come to church with me, we're going to do a family portrait with the mothers, and we're going to print out the pictures, give you an uh, album to put it in, and we want you to come and take pictures with your family. I know, I know we all take pictures all the time. You, you know, you probably took a picture in your mirror before you came to church today. If you did that, raise your hand real quick. Let me point you out. I know I'm in the house. I see one in the back. The rest of y'all, I do an altar call after, uh, after I preach. I do an altar call. I know some of y'all, y'all, I, I, I seen so much, especially y'all ladies, Y'all see that big old mirror in the bathroom in there, and I see y'all on the story. Y'all take pictures. Some of y'all already took it this morning. Y'all don't want to wave your hand. That's all right. That's all right. And so she said she was in the mirror. She didn't take the picture, but she going to get her one. But listen, I know we always take pictures, but uh, isn't it something to have your own picture sitting there up on your fireplace and be able to see it with your family and your children? Those are memories that you can never get back. Amen. So listen, we want to challenge you. Invite your family with you. Invite your friends. Listen, we're going to take pictures. We're going to have a whole photo booth set up. We're going to go ahead and print those uh, pictures out so that you can have those pictures in your hand. We're also sending you a digital copy as well. We know you like to post it on Facebook and Instagram, so social media, whatever you have, but we want to put something in your hand and also send you the digital file, uh, file. So listen, we have the flyer here. We'll start posting it immediately after service. But listen, I want you guys to come here. Listen, because we know that Mother's Day could be a rough time for some people. Is it? Can, can I get an amen? For those that have lost loved ones, and, and all, that could be a devastating time. But we're not going to allow that time to uh, devastate us. We're not going to have a down service. We're going to come, and we're going to be in the presence of the Lord. We're going to think of good memories of our mothers. Oh, come on, come on. We're going to think of the good times that we had, the years that we did. And we're going we're gonna to come, and we're going to celebrate, amen, because if it wasn't for our mothers, we wouldn't be here, amen. There's nothing like a mother's love. So we're going to come and we're not going to have a downtime here at One Step of Faith. We're going to come and celebrate Jesus. We're going to celebrate the mothers here at One Step of Faith. Amen. Amen. And then also the mother of the church, the mother of the church, Sister Dangerfield, her birthday is on uh, Mother's Day on next Sunday. Wave your hand, Sister D. Whether y'all know it or not, y'all are her y'all y'all are her child. Whether y'all know it or not, she she mother all of us here at the church, amen. And so we're gonna we're gonna be a blessing to Sister D on next week too. Y'all ain't y'all ain't saying nothing. We're gonna be a blessing, Sister D. I want you to get ready. We're gonna be a blessing to you next week. All right. She said, all right, I want y'all to come ready. We're going to be a blessing. And I just want to put it in your ear. We was going to surprise her, but God told me to go ahead and tell y'all. We're going we're gonna to have something set up for her, and we're going to bless her. Plus, she's the mother of the church. Amen. So we're just going to be a blessing to the mother of the church. Can we do that? And so I don't care if it's a dollar two dollars. We're going to put something in her hand on next week, all right? And don't you call out next week either, Sister D. I'll put you in a chair right here in front of everybody. But we're going to be a blessing. Y'all just don't know. I love Sister D so much. Hey, man, she is just a joy to my life. I don't care what kind of day you having. If you get around Sister D, your day will turn around. It will turn around. She walked into church today. 
isn't it good to be at church today? That's how she spoke to me. I, I got excited. I, I was tired when she came in there, but I'm telling you, I got excited just to hear her voice. I'm telling you, so we just want to be a blessing to Sister D. Anybody ready for the Word of God? And am I missing any announcements? I'm, I'm just talking my head off today. Amen. Anybody ready for the Word of God? Amen. Today, today we are going to take of the Lord's Supper on today. Uh, we're going to do it a little different than we normally do. Uh, we're going to do it a little, little bit different. We're going to take it at the end. We're going to take it at the end of the sermon. Because today I want to talk to you about the importance of communion. Everybody say the importance of communion. The importance of communion. And I don't know if you guys was able to do it. And I'll give you an opportunity. We did have the communion table out in the back. Uh, we switched it up a little bit. You know, we didn't want everybody touching all over everything. But if you didn't get one, we'll make sure you get one before we take up communion. We'll still come by and give you your communion package. But today I want to talk about the importance of communion. A lot of times, a lot of times we take communion as a tradition. We just take it as, you know, every first Sunday of every month we take communion. And, you know, and that's good. Nothing's wrong with that. It's nothing with having a plan, nothing with having a strategy, nothing with having, and you know, the way you do things. But a lot of times when you do things over and over and over again, it becomes, it becomes nonchalant to you. It begins not to mean anything to you. I heard, y'all know I'm knows I hear everything. I don't even know who was talking, but I heard the conversation. They was talking about, don't we wear white on Sundays? On first Sundays, don't we wear white? Don't we wear black? And so they were having it with Sister D. And Sister D was like, no, we, we don't wear white all the time. I, I want to wear what I want to wear. I see some of y'all wish y'all white on. There ain't nothing wrong with that. But a lot of times when it comes to communion, we do it just as a tradition. And sometimes when tradition comes, we don't understand why we're doing it. I'm just doing it because that's what we always have done. I, I, I mean, I grew up all my life, and on first Sunday of every, every month, we took communion. And I just knew lock clock work. I got to get ready to take my bread and take my communion. I had uh, my, my daughter, uh, Aubrey, I was about to call her Brittany. She act like Brittany so much. But uh, my daughter, Aubrey, six years old, and I was uh, getting ready, getting the um, communion package ready. She, Daddy, what you doing? I said, I'm putting these packages in, getting ready for communion. And she said, but Daddy, I don't, I, I don't like them things. She said, that bread, that bread ain't nothing but, it ain't nothing but plastic, Daddy. That, that, that ain't no real bread. That's plastic, Daddy. That's plastic. Daddy, I said, shut up, girl. Hush up. She said, Daddy, is that some real bread? I said, yes, Aubrey, it's bread. No, it ain't. It's plastic. But a lot of times what we do, we come in and we have this same, you know, you know how it is. You just got your same routine. You know how it is. You know how it is when you have a routine, just like, you know, anybody have the same commute to work every day? Anybody have the same commute to work every single day? Have you ever had that tunnel vision, especially if you got a little ways to go, and you don't even remember how you got to work? You know you was driving. You don't know. You don't even, you know, have you ever been on the highway and you got that tunnel vision there? And I remember I would be on the phone with Lady Britain. I had that tunnel vision. She would call and say, where you at? And I would be in an impasse, like where I can't tell you where I am, and I can't tell you what I done passed because I was just tunnel vision. It's like you can get there with your eyes closed. You just know when to turn. You, you don't even see the signs. You just know when, you know, you just turn your bleak on, and you just, you know, because you do it all over and over again. And that's the same way how we treat communion. This grape juice, is it small? Where it's been at? I don't even know. But you know how we do. Oh, all right. Y'all don't want to talk back to me. But today I want to talk to you about the importance of communion. That sounds real good. You're going to have to play all day if you keep on. So, all right, all right. The importance of communion. Everybody say it with me. Say the importance of communion. A lot of times what we do, we come in, we give you the importance real quick. We say a quick prayer. We, we repent real quick and we take up communion. But the Lord told me, Sister Veronica, he said, take it serious. Let people know why we take 
communion. I mean, I want to break it all the way down for the smallest child that's in here. I'm talking about the baby you got in your hand. If they understand anything, I want to break it down to you today while we take of the Lord's Supper. Get your Bible, get your Bible, get your Bible. 1 Corinthians chapter 11, verse 23. The presence of the Lord is here, I'm telling you. And the reason we're going to take this thing serious is because when we understand the benefits and when we understand why we take up the Lord's Supper, why we take up communion, when you understand the benefits that comes with it, then I believe your life is going to change for the better. Just like when you start a new job, when you understand the benefits, the you know, the job might not be all that, but when you under, understand the benefits that comes with it, the last job I worked at, as soon as I walked in the door, I had 10 days vacation, five sick days. I had, uh, you know, uh, two more uh, 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 special days I can take at any time. I walked in the door with over 17, really 22 days of time off. See, some of y'all, y'all, y'all ain't never had a real job like that. Most jobs, you go in and you got to work the first 90 days before you get one day off. And then you had to work so many hours to incur eight hours. And so when you get some good benefits and you understand what good benefits are, you say, man, I, I better stick around. Lady Britain, my insurance, oh, my insurance was just, it was awesome. I'm talking about, you're talking about not having to pay money for anything. Good benefits. Everybody say good benefits. Why are you talking about that, Pastor? I'm talking about because what happens is when you understand the benefits of communion, then it, it'll make you say, oh, wait a minute. The Lord has done something good for me. Let's read the, let's read the scripture. 1 Corinthians 11, uh, chapter 11. Verse 23, and I'm going to read through verse 29, and I'll read it real quick. Hallelujah. For I have received of the Lord that which also I deliver unto you, that the Lord Jesus, the same he took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is broken for you. This do in remembrance of me. Verse 25 says, After the same manner also he took the cup. When he sup saying, this cup is the New Testament in my blood. This do ye as alt as ye drink it in remembrance of me. Y'all reading along with me? All right. Uh, verse 26 says, for as often as ye eat this bread and drink this cup, ye do show the Lord's death till he comes. Verse 27 says, wherefore, whosoever shall eat this bread and drink this cup of the Lord unworthily shall be guilty of the body and the blood of the Lord. Verse 28 says, but let a man examine himself or herself, and so let him or her eat of that bread and drink of that cup. Verse 29 says, for he that eateth and drinketh unworthily eateth and drinketh damnation to him or herself, not discerning the Lord's body. Let me talk about it very quickly, very quickly. The Bible sat the, uh, the Jesus set the, the disciples down because he understood what his life was about. Can I just give you a little summary real quick? He understood, Jesus understood why he was here on earth and he understood why we call it the Last Supper or, or, or the Lord's Supper. Why do we call it? Because Jesus, he sat the disciples down and he understood this was the last time he was going to break bread with the disciples. And he sat the disciples down and he talked to them. He said, listen, when you take up this bread, when you take up the bread, you're taking up the body. Even before his body was hung, hung on the tree, he said, listen, you're still putting my body in remembrance. When you drink up this cup, it says it's the blood. We all know the blood of Jesus. Uh, he was pierced in his side and the blood came dripping down. There. And he said, listen, every time you take of this communion, this Lord's Supper, the bread and the, and the juice, the blood. He said that we are remembering what Jesus Christ has done for us. But then he said, he talked to them, he said, listen, 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 and this is what I want to I wanna put into your hearts today. The Bible says that every time that you take up communion, he said, examine yourself. Do what? 
Examine yourself. Examine yourself. And so there are some things. Uh, what must I do when I take communion? What must I do when I take communion? I want to talk about three things. What must I do when I take communion? Number one, I must examine myself. Number two, I must forgive. And number three, I must repent. Am I in the house today? Am I? Y'all all right? If your neighbor sleep, wake them up, push them down, pick them back up, and say, no, we got to take this thing serious. Number one, we must examine ourselves. Can I ask you a question? Are you all that in a bag of chips? Oh, yeah, yeah. You know, y'all saying the right answers, but how do you really view yourself? Because a lot of times we think that we are who we are because of what we've done. But I'm only who I am because of Jesus Christ. I got two amens over here. I, I am who I am because of him. The Bible says examine yourself. See what's in your heart. And I found that I'm not going to always do everything right, but is my heart right? I'm not going to always say the right things, but did I, did, did I do it with a pure heart? Did I do it with a sincere heart? God say, examine yourself. Y'all ate man me real good, but let me talk to the other side for the ones that. A lot of us, we only do things to be seen. And that's not a good heart. Have we not been talking about we look real good on the outside, but that inside of yours. I, I don't know, Brother Brian, I don't know why I keep talking about that inside of yours. God said, examine yourselves. Because if we're honest, we can find everything wrong with everybody else. Oh, he didn't do that right. She, he, nah, she didn't not nah, look at, nah. It's, the Bible says do what? Examine yourself. <laughs> oh, the presence of the Lord is in this place. Can I help you when you examine yourself? Because if you really understand, you know what's wrong before anybody else knows what's wrong. A lot of times we just keep overlooking it. We keep. Y'all know I, I tell everything. I got on this black shirt right and This black shirt, I, I washed it and, and uh, it was in a clothes hamper with some other things with a, with a, uh, you know, with a red towel. And because of me, you know, because I, and I'm just showing you about examining yourself, where you're sitting at, you can't see all the lint that's on the shirt, but I can. Me and brother Mike, we was in there with that lint brush. I was like, Mike, I can't. He said, Pastor, I'm standing two feet away, and I can't see the lint. I said, but I can. Y'all ain't caught it yet. But I can. I'm in there. I'm talking about y'all. I'm just rolling. Just, he said, Pastor, can't nobody see it. But I can. What am I talking about? A lot of you, you need to examine yourself. And some of you, you okay because people can't see it. But you ought to say, wait a minute, but I can see it. I can see what's going on. I can see. Somebody say, I got to examine myself, examine myself. I'm not all that. I, I can tell you now, I'm not all that. I, I, I need some help sometimes. But guess what? I go to God for that help. Number one, what must I do when I take up communion? I must examine myself. Number two, number two. I must forgive. I must do what? I was just talking about you, Mike. I must what? Forgive. Everybody say, I got to forgive. Once we examine ourselves, we must find those places of unforgiveness that's in our heart. Everybody say, forgiveness. Forgiveness is not a suggestion. It is a requirement. All right, let me, let me go to this side of the church. 
Forgiveness is not a suggestion. It is a what? It is a commandment. God says when ye stand praying, forgive. Who's that person that you haven't forgave? Can, can, can I be real, real quick? A lot of us, we only want to forgive when the person say, I'm sorry. When the person only admits their wrongdoing. We only want to uh, say, I'm sorry, once you don't got over it. That ain't what God said. He said, when you stay in praying, forgive. And you ought to be praying all the time because the Bible say pray without ceasing. So you should be quick to forgive. Forgiveness does not mean that the person didn't do you wrong, didn't mean that they, they are right, doesn't mean that they, whatever. Forgiveness is for you. Tell your neighbor, say, forgiveness is for you. Let me hurry up. And sometimes you got to forgive yourself. Not sometimes, all the time. You got to forgive yourself. Quick question, how many of y'all made some stupid decision. I ain't talking about crazy. I'm talking about stupid decision. You said, why in the world did I do that? And what happens is you keep beating yourself up because of the mistake that you made. But you must forgive yourself. And when you're quick to forgive yourself, you'll be quick to forgive others. When you're quick to examine yourself, you're quick to forgive others. Uh-uh. Now, come on here, Holy Ghost. When you are quick to examine yourself, you are quick to forgive others. What are you talking about, Pastor? Because when you understand that you go through things in your life, guess what? You understand other people go through things in their lives as well. I'm quick to forgive because you could have just had the worst day of your life. And you put it out on me. Oh, man, I forgive you. Now, that don't mean I'm going to let you keep coming and doing me wrong now. I'm going to say, all right now, hey, 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 hey. Ain't been saved all my life. You better go on about your business. I forgive you, but you better get out of my face. And I ain't talking about swinging. I'm just saying I'm not going to let nobody abuse me. But when you're quick to examine yourself, then you're quick to forgive others. Because others go through things. Others have bad days. Others are dealing with things on the inside. But when you are highly exalting yourself and, and, and make it seem as though you always are right and you always do things right, I, I ain't found such a perfect person but Jesus Christ. A lot of you guys are so prideful that you can't even admit when you're wrong. Oh, I ain't talking about y'all. I'm talking about me too. Sometimes it's hard to swallow that pill of that thing we call pride and say, I'm, I'm sorry. Mr. Brown, he said, I'm sorry. No, 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 no. When you examine yourself, you're quick to forgive. So number one, what must I do when I give communion? I'm talking about this because the Bible says not unworthy. He said unworthily. It says that you got to examine yourself and say, Lord, listen, I'm nothing without you. I'm nothing. The Bible says, in my flesh dwells no good things. So what must I do? I must examine myself. Number two, I must uh, forgive. Number three, I must repent. Everybody say repent. Repent. That word repent, every time we think about repent, we think about repenting for sin. But sometimes your, 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 your repentance will be because of your disobedience. Uh-oh. Because of your what? Mike, what did a bishop say when we was listening to him? Partial obedience is disobedience. And a lot of you, sometimes you got to go to God and say, God, I didn't do what you told me to do. I, 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 I didn't do. It's just like this. If God told you, he said, listen, go give Brother Arsenio $10. You give Arsenio $5. You say, man, I blessed Arsenio today. But no, you didn't do what God told you to do. He said, give them 10. And here you are highly exalting yourself. Yeah, I was able to bless. I was able to bless. And I, no, no, no. God said, no, no, no. I told you to do a specific thing. 
A lot of you, you, you know how it is. You know what God talked to you about. You know what God told you not to do and what to do. And, and it doesn't necessarily mean that it was a sin. doesn't necessarily mean that it was wrong. did not necessarily mean it was a bad thing. But when God tell you to do something, he has something in mind. Did I not talk about last week? See, some things I can't do that y'all can do, and it ain't even a sin. But God told me not to do it. And I can't do it because Brother Arsenio can get away with it. I got to understand that what God tell me to do is for me. You got to go to God and say, God, I repent. I, I didn't do the things you told me to do. I, I, I didn't fulfill the assignment you told me to fulfill. Can I talk to you real quick? A lot of us are ruled by emotions. A lot of us are ruled by how we feel. But I, I am ruled by what the word of the Lord says. No matter how I feel, no matter what's going on, I'm going to do what God called me to do. Examine yourself. Be quick to forgive. Be quick to repent. Lord, I'm sorry. Elder Keela says this way. I love to hear her every time she prays. She said, Lord, forgive us for those things that we have done knowingly or unknowingly. I love it. Every time I hear it, I be like, Lord, because you know how it is. We might have done some things, and we might have hurt some people's feelings, and we didn't even know we did it. People are upset with us, ready to hit us upside the head, and we walking around like we've done everything right. But, Lord, forgive me for the things I've done knowingly or unknowingly. God, I just want to be right before you, God. I just want to be pleasing in your sight. I want to, when I get to heaven, I want you to say, well done, my good and favorite servant. I, I, I mean, I want, to be, I want to be loved by people. I want to be liked by people. But God, you're the one that really matters. You're the one that I really want to, uh, you know, you to be saying, hey, I'm proud of my son. I'm proud of my daughter. And so we must repent and say, God, if I'm doing anything that I shouldn't be doing, anything you don't want me to do, God, anything I should be doing that I'm not doing, God, I ask you to forgive me. The Bible says it this way, trust in the Lord with all thine heart. Lean not to thine own understanding, but in all thy, in all thy, in all thy what? In all your ways, acknowledge him and he will direct your path. In all your ways, in all your ways. When you're at the grocery store, when you're on your job, when you're at the school, don't be going up there with your bunnet on, trying to fuss out the teacher because your child, no, in all your ways. Somebody done did that this week. Y'all better, all right, all right, all right. All right, so what must I do? I must examine myself, I must forgive, and I must repent. What happens, let me give you the benefits real quick. What happens when I take up communion? Anybody getting something real quick? I, uh, we shouted last week. I gave y'all, y'all shouted today. So y'all, come on, come on, come on. Wake up. Y'all shouted. Well, two of y'all shouted. The rest of y'all were just clapping your hand. What happens when I take communion? When I take of communion, number one, I remember what Jesus done. When I take of communion, the number one thing I do is I remember what he's done. The Bible says it this way. Let's go back to our text scripture real quick. It says in verse 24, 1 Corinthians chapter, chapter 11, verse 24, it says, And when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, Take, eat, this is my body, which is broken for you. This do in remembrance of me. You see it's written in red. This is Jesus talking. He said, When you take of the Lord's Supper, you are putting yourself in remembrance of what Jesus Christ did. We did not just celebrate Easter and Resurrection Sunday. How many of y'all know that Jesus died on the cross? How many of y'all know Jesus died on the cross? How many of y'all know he, he was buried, but he rose on the third day? Now, I'm going to say a statement. Let me finish it before. He didn't do it for me. He did it for you. He did it for you individually. And so you saying the same thing? He did it for me individually. He did it for you individually. For your name. Listen, your relationship with God is not because of your grandparents, your parents, your brother, your sister, your brother, your daughter. It's because of your personal relationship. And he did it just for, somebody say for me, for me. He did it just for me. And so when I take up communion, I am remembering what Jesus Christ did, what he endured. The nails in his hand, the crown of thorns on his head, 
The piercing in his side that he took, he did it just for, somebody say, just for me. So every time I take up the Lord's communion, it's not just a traditional thing because it's first Sunday in May. No, I'm doing it because I remember what he done. I remember the punishment that he took. I remember that he didn't deserve it. He was a perfect man, but he did it because he knew over 20,000, over uh, uh, tw uh, 2,000 years ago that you were going to need. You were going to need. You were going to need. You, you were going to need what? Need what? You were going to need healing, deliverance, provision. You was going to need everything that he died on the cross for. So what happens when I take up communion? I remember what Jesus done. Number two, what happens when I take up communion? I am made the righteousness of God. I am made the righteousness of God. Because, listen, we said we're putting God in remembrance of what he done. But then number two, I am made the righteousness of God. In 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 21, 2 Corinthians, hear me out, hear me out. It says, for he made him to be sin for us who knew no sin, that we might be made the righteousness of God in him. You're not righteous because of what you've done. You're righteous because of what he done. And so when I remember that, I said, wait a minute. I'm righteous because of he. He is righteous. He was sin when he knew no sin. But he took my sin. And he threw my sin away. And now I am the righteousness of God. Wait a minute, Pastor. I don't do everything right. I am the righteousness of God. Somebody say, I am the righteousness of God. Number three, this is the last one I'm going to talk to you about. When you take up the Lord's Supper, when you take of communion today, you receive, you are healed. I am healed by the stripes of Jesus Christ. Somebody say, I am healed by the stripes of Jesus. A couple of scriptures, a couple of scriptures. We got to. Let you go. Matthew 8, 16, 17. Hallelujah. Matthew 8, 16, 17. How many of y'all getting this word today? Hallelujah. That's all right. That baby was preaching to me. You let that baby preach. I know how I am about children. Matthew 8, 16, 17. When the evening was come, they brought unto him many that was possessed with devils, and he cast out the spirits with his words and healed all that were what? sick. Verse 17 says that it might be fulfilled, which was spoken by Isaiah the prophet, saying himself took our infirmities and bear our sicknesses. The Bible says, listen, when we take up the Lord's Supper, when we take and we bring back in remembrance of what he done, he said, listen, he said he healed everybody that was sick. Not only that, he said, listen, he said he took our infirmities, infirmities. He took away the sin. He took away uh, the things that we've done wrong. He said, I took that. And he said, I bear sicknesses. If he took it on his body, guess what? You don't have to take it on yours. When I'm taking up communion, I'm saying, Lord, I, you know what? I'm putting in remembrance that you died so I don't even have to deal with sickness and disease. Am I helping anybody today? Let me give you another scripture real quick, real quick. Isaiah 53, verse 3 through 5. Isaiah 53, 3 through 5. He was despised and rejected a man, a man of sorrows, acquainted with grief. And we hid as it was our faces from him. He was despised, and we esteemed him not. Verse 4 says, surely he hath borne our griefs and carried our sorrows. Yet we did esteem him, stricken, smitten of God, and afflicted. But he was wounded for our transgression. He was bruised for our iniquities, the chastisement of our peace. Everybody say our peace was upon him, and with his stripes, with his stripes, we're going to be here. With his stripes, sometime down the road, we're going to be here. No, he said, with his stripes, we... Listen, when we receive a communion and we put God in remembrance of what Jesus done, we take on healing right now. Let me go to this side of the church. 
Maybe, maybe, maybe they didn't. We take on healing when? Right? He said, by the stripes of Jesus, we are healed. If you are healed, then you're not going to be healed. You're already healed. Tasha said, present tense. We heal right here on May the 1st. Is it May 1st? May 1st, 2022 at 1141 on a Sunday morning. And one step of faith, 805 Old Highway 3 on, on our virtual life. You are healed. Can I, can I just drop this in real quick? He already paid for it. It's already paid for. We're not going to take communion by tradition today. We're going we're gonna to remember what he done. We celebrated Easter. We came. We had a good time. But I'm putting God in remembrance of what he done. The Bible says, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life. His son came into the world not to condemn the world but that the world through him might be saved. Listen, what we're taking up communion, they said, God, we thank you for what you've done. You sent Jesus, not for my neighbor, not for old boy down on the other side of my road, but he sent him just for me. And Lord, when I take up communion, I'm taking on all of the benefits. There's a lot of other benefits. We'll be here all day if I talk about all of them. But there's a lot of benefits that came with what he did on the cross and what he did at Calvary. And as I take up the Lord's Supper, I'm putting in remembrance. It's just like this. When you don't understand your benefits and, and you want to know if you, wanna, if you want some days off, you want to know, uh, you know, do I have the time to take off to do my vacation? What do you do? You go back to the handbook and you say, wait, how many days I got? When, when do my, my vacation days start over? When do, you know, I, I, you know, do it do the physical year? Do it do it at the first beginning of the year? When do my days start over? Because I plan on taking a vacation. Anybody plan on taking a vacation? Y'all know what I'm talking about. And so what do you do? You go back and say, wait a minute. I've been here 10 years. I can't remember how. Let me go back and see when my days start over. Let me go back and look at the benefits. Let me go back and see what do I have. When you take up the Lord's, you say, God, I'm remembering. I am healed by the stripes of Jesus. I remember that I am the righteousness of God. Yeah, I had some sins in the past, but now I am the righteousness of God. Somebody say, I am the righteousness of God. Today, we're going to take up communion. But the first thing we're going to do is do, oh, okay, y'all don't call on. Look at y'all. I got two of y'all that don't. We're going to examine ourselves. Only two of y'all called it. I should have preached a little bit longer. We're going to do what? We're going to examine our, I'm going to examine Pastor Jabel. I'm not going to look at you and. And you sinner, you bless me. No, no, no. I'm looking at past, I'm looking at the things I need to change, the things I need to work on, the things I need, the people I need to forgive, the people I need to say, listen, uh, you know what? I love you. I'm going to examine myself. I'm going to forgive. And then I'm going to repent. I'm going to what? Repent. Can we do that today before we take up communion? Can we stand all over this place? That's my sermon today. That's my sermon. And we, we're we going to take up the Lord's Supper, but we're going to do these things first. We're going to, that's what I want you to do. Next 30 seconds, examine yourself. Hold on, give me 45 seconds. Because a lot of times you, we, we point the fingers at every, but if he did, wouldn't have did what he done, I wouldn't have said what I said. No, examine. I was telling my one of my members, I said, what I believe I should do is make sure I'm always doing what I know I'm supposed to do. I don't care how wrong you talk to me, how bad you do me. I don't care. Uh, 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 if I got to take off running so you, so you won't hit me so I won't fight you, that's what I got to do. Because I wanted to be said, I, I tried to do the right thing. Don't let no one provoke you to get out of character. You said, no, I choose to do the right thing. Everybody else is doing wrong. Everybody else is getting away with it. They're not reaping any consequences, but I choose to do the right thing. I examine. Examine yourself real quick, real quick. I'm going to give you 30 seconds. Examine yourself. 
think about yourself. Think about yourself. Where is your shortcoming? Where are those things that you need to work on? I'm not, I'm not talking about saying how can you be a better wife, a better husband, a better father, a better mother, better, better brother, better uh, son, a daughter. How can I be a better me? How can I be a better neighbor to my, to my family here at One Step of Faith? How can I be a, na- a better neighbor to people in my home and, and in my neighborhood? What are some things I need to work on? I examine myself. God, I want to I want to look like you. I want to talk like you. I want to walk like you. I want to act like you. I want to speak like you. I want to move like you move. I want to I want to be like you. Examine yourself. Then number 2. You got to forgive. Say this with me. We'll do this part together. Say, "Father God, right now, I forgive all those people that have done me wrong. Those people have said things against me, I forgive them now. Every person that had any say so in my life that I didn't like, I forgive them. I free them now in Jesus' name. Father, I have no alt, no animosity against anyone. I owe them nothing but to love them. And so today, I make a choice to love them in spite of, in Jesus' name. Last part we're going to do is we're going to repent. Repent means to have a change of heart, have a change of mind. It doesn't necessarily mean you have sin, but I'm going to change my ways. I'm going to, and many of you, maybe you might have sin in your life, but today, now you're going to be made the righteousness of God because you're going to say, listen, the Bible says if you, Confess your sins. He's faithful. He's just to forgive you, cleanse you from all unrighteousness. If he can forgive you from your sin, then he can forgive you from some things that you just need to fix. He can help you in those areas as well. So say this with me. Say, Father God, I repent. If I have anything that's in me that's not like you, if it don't look like you, if it don't act like you, if it don't talk like you, I ask you now to take it away. Father God, I make you the Lord of my life. Change my life for the better in Jesus' name. Father, I give you permission to to fix me, to correct me, to make me new in Jesus' name. Today is a new start for me. I will be a better child of God, a better husband, a better wife, a better child. I'll be better in every area of my life. Devil. Oh, no, y'all got to say this. Say, devil, you bald-headed. Oh, yeah, snagger too. Devil, you have no say-so in my life. I denounce you now. The Bible says, resist the devil and he will flee. So devil, I take authority over you now, over my life, over my family, over my children, over my finances, over my faith, over my health. I denounce you now and I decree and declare that I am a child of God and I'm walking in the fullness thereof and I thank you now that I'm walking in abundance I'm walking in favor I'm walking in increase I'm walking in overflow I am a child of the king come on clap your hands and give God praise all over this place come on if you said that today and you really mean it come on I dare you to give God praise Oh, my relationship with God is it's between me and him. And I am the righteousness of God. No evil befalls me. No plague comes near my dwelling. I will not dash my feet on the stone. For I am a child of the, the most high God. Come on, clap your hand as you take your seat today. Clap your hand. Oh, the presence of the Lord is here today. 
Listen, my challenge to you today, I want you to take communion serious today. I want you to take communion serious today. We're not going to take it by tradition. We're not, you know, I know it's first Sunday, yeah, yeah, yeah. But I don't want you to just take it because we're taking it. But saying, Lord, I am remembering what you've done. I'm remembering what you've done. Tasha, you got something you're going to sing for me today? Hallelujah. I'm going to let, I'm going to let them sing real quick. And we are going, we're going to prepare ourselves to take of the Lord's Supper. We are going to prepare ourselves to say, Lord, do something in me today. Do something on the inside of me. God, do something in me today. Listen, if you're here today, as they get ready to sing for me, we're just going to release a, we're just going to release a sound in this atmosphere. We're going to just saturate this atmosphere. There's some people that said that prayer for the first time, that received Jesus into their heart for the first time. There's some people that's dealing with some things in their lives, and, and, and you need to know God as a healer. Listen, I, I believe right now, I believe right now that God is doing the work right now. Listen, if you need, if you need a communion package, raise your hand real quick. Raise your hand if you didn't get one when you walked in. And if y'all can, did you get me one, Brother Mike? You did get me one, okay? They're going to sing for me real quick. Tasha, use this mic for me. I don't know what's going on with that. We'll sing this and then I give him about a good three minutes, all right? All right. Healer, I believe you are all I need. Hallelujah. Come on, let's just lift our hands and worship right here. Say, I believe. You're my healer. I believe you are.
ready to take up communion on today. Glory to God. Hallelujah. I decree and declare that healing is taking place. I decree and declare that healing is taking place now in the name of Jesus. And I decree and declare that every struggle is over. Every struggle is over in Jesus' name. Every struggle, everybody say it with me. Say every struggle is over in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Everyone have your communion. Amen. If you'll go ahead and break the seal. We're going to take up the Lord's Supper. We're going to put God in remembrance of what he done. Amen. And I'm telling you, if you're in this place today, you have any kind of pain in your body, you go ahead and just cut and mute that mic for me, please, ma'am. Uh, if you have any, any, any pain in your body, any pain at all, as you begin to take up this Lord's Supper, I decree and declare I'm healed in Jesus' name. I just challenge you to say I'm healed in Jesus' name. No matter what's been going, I am healed in Jesus' name. Can we do that today? Amen. We'll read the scripture, 1 Corinthians 11, verse 24 and verse 25. Hallelujah. Glory to God. If y'all, can we do this? Can we stand and do this today? Can we? Is that all right? Hallelujah. Let's stand and do it today. Glory to God. We're going to take this thing serious today, all right? If you can't stand, that's fine. Just for the ones that can and will. Man, you can if you. It's just, you're all right. You're all right. Our healing is taking place. In the name of Jesus, deliverance is taking place. In the high move soul. And I believe you're not here by coincidence. God wants you to receive of him today. The greater one is on the inside of you. And I speak strength to your body even now. I speak it now. I speak it now. Verse 24 says, And when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is broken for you this do in remembrance of me. You may eat your bread. I receive it now. Verse 25 says, After the same manner also he took the cup when he had supped, saying, This cup is the New Testament in my blood. This do ye as often as ye drink it in remembrance of me. You may drink. Father, in the name of Jesus, Father, we receive it now. We receive now of your body and of your blood. Thank you for what you've done, God. Father, we receive it. We take ownership, God, of what you sent Jesus to do in our lives and in our bodies, God. Father, we do. Can y'all just talk to God? Just, Father, I receive it now, God. I put you in remembrance of what you've done just for me. God, you did it just for me. Father, I thank you that I'm healed, that I'm healed. Thank you I'm free. I thank you I'm delivered. I am whole. And, Father, I thank you for it now. In the name of Jesus. I speak the sickness and I command it to go. I speak the pain and I command it to go. I speak now to, to depression and I command it to go. I speak to oppression and I command it to go now in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. We take authority. We take our place of authority now and we say, devil, you have no say. In the name of Jesus Christ, in the name of Jesus Christ. Father, we receive the healing power of God flow through my body now in the name of Jesus in the name of Jesus can we just lift up our voice and just begin to worship the King of King and the Lord Father we thank you God Father you're an awesome God Father you rule and you reign oh God Father we met Father we thank you right now thank you for your presence God thank you thank you for your presence thank you Father, for, thank you for doing the work in me, God. Doing the work in my body. God, thank you for doing the work, God. I... Glory, glory, glory. We receive your healing, Jesus. Hallelujah.
If you want me to lay hands on you, I just want you to run out your seat. I'm going to just give you an opportunity. I don't want to rob you of that opportunity. If you want me to lay my hands on you today, I want you to just run down real quick. If you need me to lay my hand on you, if you say, Pastor, I want you to touch it. I'm going to give you an opportunity to run down. Hallelujah. I supposed to be praying. I didn't want to call you out, but I knew you supposed to come. And you're the reason I did it. You're the reason I did what I did. How you doing? can heal you today. God can heal. I'm most so whole. You know God is a healer. Father, in the name of Jesus, Father, I pray for my dear brother today, God. Father, I thank you right now that you are doing the work in his body now. Father, that same power that raised Jesus Christ from the dead, Father, I thank you right now that you can give him strength in his body now. Father, in the name of Jesus, you said we can lay hand on the sick and they shall recover. We speak recovery in his arm, in his left side. Father, we decree that the strength of God, Elder Dion, you can help me lay your hands on them. Have more soul strength now, strength. We speak strength in the mighty name of Jesus, in the mighty name of Jesus, in the mighty humble Rebebe Seko Ramaha. Father, we release our faith as a whole church family and we speak strength now in the name of Jesus in the name of Jesus in the name of Jesus in the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus. do you have any feeling do you have any feeling right here do you feel it a little bit so you can't even hardly open your hand are you trying try to open your hand try to open your hand huh? uh, oh yeah oh it's all good in the mighty name of Jesus in the in the mighty humble rebe de se cobra mamaha Mana na de rebo so co re de de rebo ho Mana ma si cobra mamaha In the mighty name of Jesus Oh rebe de he Amaha Father we say, we say strength now, strength now Feeling, feeling now Oh nothing is too hard for God Nothing is too hard For my God we In the mighty name of Jesus. Woo. In the mighty name of Jesus. So tell me how you feel. How you feel? Uh, you good? In the tingling, in the tingling. Always, always. Listen. Don't fight the tingling. Because if there's feeling, guess what? God is still working. Every time, listen, this is what I want you to do. This is your homework assignment. Every time you feel that tingling, you said always. So that means every time, God, I thank you for healing me. I thank you for strength coming back in my arm. We're going to, you hear everybody saying amen? We're going to touch and agree with you. I had a lady in my church had a stroke. She could barely even talk. And God healed her. And if he healed her, guess what? He can heal you too. You hear me? Listen, that feeling could have been all the way gone. But I'm telling you, that tingling is God is doing the work. And it's already done. Is somebody say it's already done? Oh, my brother, he's happy today. Father, in the name of it's already done. Everybody say it's already done. In the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus. Yes, ma'am, come on. Hallelujah. Father, healing and all 
the name of Jesus. Father, I thank you for a miracle. Thank you for a miracle. Father, what you did, you did just for Miss Rhonda. And Father, I thank you for miracle signs and wonders happening in her body now. In Jesus' name. We speak to her body and we command her body to line up with the word of God. Father, we decree and declare. Oh, Rabbi Seiko. Speak right now to a bloodstream, God. We speak to every organ, every tissue, and we command it to line up now. Say this with me. Say, Father, you are a healer. And Father, I thank you now that you are healing my body now from the top of my head to the bottom of my feet. I decree and declare that I'm healthy. I am strong in my body. In Jesus' name, devil, I command you now, take your hand off of my body. I am a child of God, and so now I reap the benefit of healing now. In Lift up your hand. I want you to praise God like, like the doctor said. They don't even have to do surgery anymore. I tell you to act like they said, listen, you don't even have to humble in the name of Jesus, Father, thank you for healing. Healing is taking place even now. Healing is taking place, oh, from the top of your head to the sole of your feet. I decree it now in the mighty name. Come on, clap your hands all over this place. Clap your hands all over this place. In the name of Jesus, in the name of Do something on them, touch your neighbor, just nudge them, put, your, put something on them, put your elbow on them or something, and say, I decree and declare that my neighbor is healed now from the top of their head to the sole of their feet. I decree now that their body will line up with the word of God in Jesus' name. I thank you, my neighbor is strong in the Lord and in the power of your might. And they're able to stand against every attack of the devil in Jesus' name. Thank you right now that today is a new day. Today is a new beginning in Jesus' name, in Jesus' name. Come on, if you believe it, clap your hands all over this place. Clap your, clap, oh, clap, clap, clap. Father, we pray for those that are online in the name of Jesus, those that need healing. Father, we say it's already done. We say that it's already done. In the mighty name of Jesus, we speak to swelling. We speak to tissues. We speak to cysts, tumors. We command it to go in the mighty name of Jesus that the healing power of God flows now. Oh, it flows now. It flows now. It flows now. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Oh, can you just lift your hands? Take your seat, but just lift your hands. Take your seat, but lift your hands. Take your seat, but lift your hands. God is doing a work in this place. Oh, hallelujah. Ah, glory to God.
two more rounds, Brother Avon, two more rounds, two more rounds. been having a problem breathing, you've been having chest pain. Who, who has that been having chest pain? That's you been having, you've been having chest pain? You just standing, okay. All right. Somebody been having chest pain, maybe somebody online, but I, it's like somebody, chest pain, take a deep breath, take a deep breath, take a deep breath, take a deep breath. God's healing power is here today. Is there somebody else, somebody else, somebody else? I don't let everybody hear all my conversation, but y'all supposed to hear this one. So start that one all the back. Okay, you start it over again. All right. I was I walked to the door a month ago. And the name of the sermon was uh, "Come and Get It." Was it was "Come and Get It"? Yes, that, that's right. And so it didn't. And then when I walked through that door, I was I was. I mean, I may not look right now. I look better than I did a month ago. And so, I, I, and I feel a lot better too. But uh, I went home and uh, I prayed, thanked the Lord for what I'm hearing. And then he brought me to this place right here. This is the truth. It is God's truth. And uh, I'm stronger. I really am. And I'm, I'm gonna thank y'all for being such a nice group of people. It's been, it's been a blessing. It's been a blessing. It, it's, been a, it's been a blessing. I'm not kidding. I'm not kidding. It's been a blessing. But when I hit that door, wow. I mean, it was like, like that. it was like that, you know. Don't give, don't give up. That's what it was. Don't give up. Yeah, don't give up. And here's the thing about it. At that time, I was going to give up. I was, I was right there. I just said, this is it. I was finished. But let me tell you something. You're hearing a great word here, and, and you have to stand. I was finished. And that's what I mean. And the Lord blessed me. He really did. And so since then, I've, I've been in town, out of town, and break my neck to get up here to, to hear this word. You got a precious, precious word here. Oh, I want to tell you something. This is real here. It, it, this is real. Oh, man, y'all just don't understand it. Hallelujah. Come on, come on. He said he was about to give up a month ago. But God said, don't give up. And we speak even more strength in this body now in the name of Jesus. Come on, point your hand this way. Come on, don't be mean. Don't be selfish. Father, we thank you for strengthening his body now. Strengthening every joint, every muscle. And strengthen his heart now. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ. 
All is well. All is well. Come on, let's give God praise for what he done in his life. Thank you, brother. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. say nothing else but he said when he walked in the door God said don't give up don't give up and that word was not only for him that word was for anybody in this place if you ever felt like giving up I'm telling you do not give up no matter how hard it seems no matter what it looks like do not give up do not give up Listen, I want to give you an opportunity I hope we got Tisha. Everybody in here just boohooing. I'm, I'm telling you, when you know that God is an awesome God, when you know that God is real, God is real. This I want to give you an opportunity right before we give. Oh, my Jesus, we were doing good in time, too. I don't know what happened, Misha. This I want to give you an opportunity. Uh, I know we're about to give, but I want to give you an opportunity. If you want to make this your church home, you said, Pastor, I've been coming. I know this is what I'm supposed to do. I want to give you an opportunity to do that as well. But go ahead and start getting your offering as well. I never want to miss that opportunity. And I'm telling you, just the testimony that brother gave, is it, it makes what we do real. Amen? I, I, I don't care. We can run. We can shout. We can dance and all that stuff. But just to hear that testimony, how God keep you when you want to give up, I'm telling you, it makes it all worth it. Amen? Amen. So, hallelujah. All right, well, let's get ready to give. I just want to make sure we gave you that opportunity today. Glory to God. Listen, real quick, if you said that prayer today earlier and you said, I believe Jesus came into my heart, I believe that I was saved today, if you would just lift your hand, we just want to get a count. If you said, Pastor, I received Jesus Christ into my heart today, I see one hand back there. Or you said, Pastor, I was restored. I was away from God, but I, I came back to fellowship today. I see, okay, two hands for restoration. If you say, Pastor, I was healed in my body today. If you say, Pastor, that was me. I had some things going on. All right, one hand, two hands, three. All right, four, four, four for healing. Glory to God. Lady Britain taking tell. I had to go to my leadership team. We always like to see what the Lord has done. Amen. Hallelujah. If you believe God did anything in your life today, throw your hands up real quick. All right, that's everybody. All right, all right, all right. Hallelujah. Amen. I'm glad I showed up to church today. Amen. Amen. Let's get ready to give. Get the offer envelope. You should be in a seat right in front of you. You can grab an offer envelope or if you're giving online, we have the ways to give. You can give by Cash App, Givelify. We have the ways to give on the screen on today. Those of you that are streaming live with us, amen, it should be on your screen as well. 
uh, the three ways to give. I challenge you, let's be a tither. Let's be a giver. Let's trust God with our finances. Amen? Let's trust God. Listen, we trust God with our bodies, with our family, with everything else. But let's trust God with our money. If God can, if God can heal your body, if he can turn some things around in your body, guess what? He can do the same in your finances. Amen? Amen. And the Bible says, as you put him first, as you tithe the tithe, he said, listen, I will open the windows of heaven and pour you out blessing. And so when you tithe, God gives you an anointing to prosper. You hear me? When you give your tithe, God gives you the ability to get wealth. It is he that gives you the ability to get wealth, but it starts with your tithe. God said, bring me mine first. And he said, I'm going to bless the rest. Amen. So listen, I want you to tithe. I want you to tithe. I want you to, listen, if you've never tithed before, I want you to start today. I got one amen. That's all right, little sis. Keep on preaching to me. I'm telling you, if you never tithe, today is your day. Say, God, I'm going to trust you. And I want you to try, try some, try him and see, try him and see. Try him and see what he do exactly what he said he's going to do. We're just living by biblical principles. We're living by what God told us to do. He said, listen, when you tithe, he said, I open a window that no man can shut. He can't even open it. He just, he just doing what I command him to do. So tithe today. He said, when you tithe, I rebuke the devourer for your sake. And so he stops the devil on your behalf. Verse 12 says, and this is Malachi 3 and 12. He said, and all nations will call you blessed, but it starts with your tithe. Let's not only be tithers, but let's give, be givers as well. The Bible says, Give and it shall be given unto you good measures, pressed down, shaken together, running over, shall me and give unto your bosom. The Bible says, 2 Corinthians 9 and 6, it said, He that soweth sparingly shall reap also sparingly. He that soweth bountifully shall reap also bountifully. Uh, according as he purpose in his heart, so let him give, not grudgingly or of necessity, but God loves a cheerful giver. He said, listen, and God is able to make all grace uh, bound towards you, that you always have an all sufficiency in all things. The Bible says that he will supply every one of your needs. Listen, we're not just giving because I'm talking about it. We're giving because God's word says that when we give and when we tithe, he will meet our needs. Amen. So listen, I want you to listen to the voice of God. Listen to the voice of God. I want you to begin to speak. I want you to begin to uh, just, I mean, do exactly what he tells you to do. We're going to be obedient. If he tell you to give $2, give $2, all right? But I'm telling you, listen to the voice of God. Listen, listen. God knows what you need. You know what you need. And say, God, I'm believing that as I tithe and as I give, God, that you're meeting every one of my needs. Amen. If you uh, first or second time guess, if you did not fill out a connection card, if you will get one of those connection cards right in front of you, or you can do the QR code as well in the seat in front of you, take your camera out. Listen, we just want to connect with you. If you need a pen, our urchers are passing them out. If you need a pen to write on your envelope, just raise your hand. We have urchers. All right. I'm trying to hurry up and let y'all go. Y'all don't let me win over time. God is good, though. God is so good. Oh, Tasha sunk up my time. That's what it was. We're going to blame Tasha. It was Tasha. She messed up my time. Yes, Tasha. <laughs> All right, let's stand. Let's get ready to give. Let's get ready to give. Hallelujah. I'm so glad I made it to church today. I'm so glad. So glad. That brother don't mess me up. Y'all know I'm a big crybaby, too, y'all. Huh? I'm trying to hold that thing together. My Jesus, let's hold your, let's hold that tithe up before God, that offering, and just say it with me. Say, Father, this is my tithe, ten percent of all my increase. I thank you now because I am a tither. I thank you that the windows of heaven are open over my life, and the devil is rebuked. I give, and it's given back unto me. Good measures, pressed down, shaken together. And running over shall men give unto my bosom. I decree and declare I have no lack. I have no shortage in the area of my life. I say now, money comes to me from every direction. I believe it and I receive it. And it's in Jesus' name. Amen, amen, and amen. Listen, if you will take direction from the earth in the back, they'll lead you out. Come giving today. That's what he said he would do. He's gonna fulfill every promise to you. Don't give up on God, cause he won't give up on you. He's able. Hallelujah, if you believe it, lift up your voice. Is it here and there? 
everybody to stand. We're going to dismiss. But before we're going to dismiss, we're going to pray over the money, over the offering. So while I have y'all standing, let's join together in unity. All right, bow your heads real quick, and then we're going to add the dismissal to it. Father, we just thank you, Lord, for what we have gave right now in the name of Jesus. Father, we just thank you, Lord, that we take our seed. And as we sow the seed, Father, we believe in our harvest right now in the name of Jesus. We thank you that once we leave this church right now, that breakthrough, that everything that we've been believing God for happens instantly right now in Jesus' name based off the seed that we have gained in Jesus' name. And Father, I thank you, Lord, that every single person in this, every single person in this place have a safe arrival after they leave this ministry in the name of Jesus. And we just thank you, Lord. That the power of God hit them wherever they are in Jesus' name. And we speak to online right now in the name of Jesus. We thank you, Lord, that the power of God hit your seat wherever you are in Jesus' name. And let everybody say, Amen. You are dismissed.